It's March 27th, 2018, and on this episode of the Crypto Coin Show, Smart Contracts Part 3. More advanced discussion about smart contracts. If you missed Smart Contracts Part 1 and 2, they're in the description box below. And in this final video, I dig even deeper into how smart contracts can and will change the future of many industries beyond the financial industry and will essentially reshape every industry which has data or transactions. So every industry that we know. I'm Ashton Addison from eventchain.io and this is the Crypto Coin Show, where I decrypt the facts to keep you on track in the crypto world. So hopefully you watched Smart Contracts Part 1 and 2, where I gave an explanation of what smart contracts are and the importance of the underlying technology for these contracts, the blockchain. I went deeper into the benefits and the drawbacks of hosting smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain and the other blockchains and trying to provide a smart contract system to the world as we know it. You should understand the difference between hosting a contract on a centralized server versus a decentralized public blockchain, as well the difference between public blockchains and private blockchains. Another topic to understand is the scalability of the transaction network of the blockchains and how it affects interacting with smart contracts on the blockchain, which I will speak again in real life situations. So how will smart contracts and blockchains reshape these industries? The simple fact that blockchain technology provides the ability to transfer value across the world directly with no financial intermediaries, efficiently and affordably, providing value to the new globalized economy. Smart contracts provide a platform on top of this transaction network to interact with transactions directly and incorporate them right into contracts to increase the transparency and interoperability of any transactions that are associated with a contract. Smart contracts are set to be adopted by many industries, but there are many challenges and barriers that smart contracts must endure before the technology will reach mainstream adoption, including the adoption of the underlying blockchain technology. But first, an overview of the benefits of smart contracts in the real world and the drawbacks. From a macroeconomic perspective, it's possible that these contracts can bring transparency, immutability, privacy, security, and interoperability to a new type of network, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction network, where the parties that are involved do not have to trust a third party. Sounds great and everything, but isn't it just as easy to implement smart contracts as, as, as there are a lot of barriers going on right now? For example, smart contracts run on the Ethereum network mainly, which is the number one network for smart contracts that are limited right now by what programming can be done to the contracts through Solidity, which is a language that was created specifically for Ethereum by Vitalik Buterin. Interacting with the contracts when the Ethereum network is backed up with the transactions is not scalable and is not going to work very well. This is going to severely affect the international business world, which needs efficient transactions 24-7 to run smoothly as well incorporating real-world information into these contracts using other APIs and other technology integration isn't so flawless right now. These are just some of the issues industries will face as they try to incorporate and reap the benefits that can be provided from smart contracts. I anticipate many industries, including the law industry, banking, security, insurance, charity, healthcare, energy, retail, the government, and every industry with transactions so every industry, to be influenced by smart contracts in one way or another. So which industries will this tech change first? Tim Draper mentioned in San Francisco, it's most beneficial to the industries that are high cost and low value. Let's give a real world example that I'm quite familiar with where this is true, the event ticketing industry. In event chain, we're using smart contracts to create an immutable record of ownership for each ticket for an event. The smart contract provides transparency for all parties to see how many tickets there are for an event, how many are sold, and how many are remaining. The peer-to-peer -peer transaction network eliminates excessive processing fees, financial intermediary transaction fees, and allows artists and fans to transact directly with one another at a much lower cost. Smart contracts will likely be used really soon in this industry as EventChain is ready to use these smart contracts this year. This is just one industry which should create a ripple effect to dozens of other industries. Back to something I mentioned in Smart Contracts Part 2 on using smart contracts on a private or public blockchain. 
many organizations in the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance are working on private blockchains, which could still be useful, but provide many benefits to international business, including more privacy and control for the governing bodies of that blockchain. Since private blockchains only have a few nodes verifying the transaction, they can govern the rules much easier. It's likely that many of these industries are better fit to use smart contracts on private blockchains rather than on public blockchains to retain more privacy and security over the files that they own, rather than executing them into the public blockchain, yet still utilizing peer-to-peer -peer transactions within their private network. Most of these industries wouldn't actually be able to adopt smart contracts if they were to do so today on Ethereum, and it's really not at the point of mass adoption yet. So how do you get these blockchains and smart contracts to the point of mass adoption? First of all, we need to lower the barriers to entry by making it easier to create smart contracts and interpret them. Right now, to create a smart contract on Ethereum, you need to know how to code in Solidity, and not many people know it since it was created specifically for Ethereum. Other competing blockchains are creating smart contracts with other more common programming languages like C and Python, which may aid in adoption, but at some point it's best to have a template system where lawyers and other professionals can create smart contracts through an interface that requires minimal technical knowledge and will almost be necessary for mainstream adoption. The other important factor for mainstream adoption is ensuring the reliability and the scalability of the underlying network which hosts these contracts. Currently, the Ethereum network can only scale to a maximum of about 30 transactions per second at capacity, not nearly enough to handle all of the business transactions in the world, including interacting with smart contracts. The Ethereum Foundation is working on some improvements known as sharding and proof of stake, which have the potential to scale the Ethereum network up to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. However, these haven't been finalized yet, so at this point, we're really just playing the waiting game. Meanwhile, other blockchains are working on different scaling protocols, and if a different blockchain like NEO or Rchain scales more efficiently, it may be easier to use smart contracts on one of those blockchains instead. And of course, private Ethereum blockchains may be more reliable, but not as immutable as a public blockchain. When blockchains have become more scalable and smart contracts are easier to create, it will accelerate the adoption of smart contracts in other industries. Well, I think that's all for now. This smart contract lesson is brought to you by Event Chain Smart Tickets, using smart contracts to solve the ticketing industry problems like excessive ticketing fees and counterfeit tickets. Please check out our project at eventchain.io. I'm Ashton Addison, and thank you for watching. Remember to like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to The Crypto Coin Show on YouTube to see my next video when I decrypt the facts to keep you on track in the crypto world.